Mike White is a contestant from Survivor's 37th season, David vs. Goliath. Oh, and he also wrote and acted in a bunch of fantastic movies and TV shows, including School of Rock and Enlightened. The White Lotus, a new HBO series about a group of interconnected people vacationing in Hawaii, is his first major artistic effort since playing Survivor, writing and directing all six episodes, and there's absolutely no way the series wasn't directly influenced by his experience on on the island. Here are five reasons why the Mike White Lotus is absolutely based on Survivor. Number one, the format. Survivor is an ensemble dramedy about a group of Americans sent to a typically islandy location. The White Lotus is an ensemble dramedy about a group of Americans sent to Hawaii. Every character enters with a broad range of ideologies, strengths, and weaknesses, all of which are tested as they grapple with the unfamiliar environment and social dynamics. The players leave their modern existences behind, participate in challenges, many of which take place in the water, and get to know each other extensively. There's also a mysterious conceit built into both shows. In Survivor, we know someone will leave the game at the end of every episode, and only one player will remain. Main, and half the joy of watching is piecing together the clues to find out who will get the boot. In The White Lotus, Mike White lets us know up front that one person will not make it off the island alive. It's up to us to speculate who that might be. Number two, David versus Goliath. The theme of Mike White's Survivor season was David versus Goliath. A tribe consisting of people from privileged, typically wealthy backgrounds faced off against a tribe of those who struggled to earn their position in society, working class underdogs. The narrative spark drama juice of the season flowed from people of different social classes either clashing or coming together. This is typical Survivor, but David vs. Goliath put an exclamation point on the socio-economic divisions of the players in particular. The White Lotus is all about Davids and Goliaths. You've got the newlyweds, Shane the rich jerk and Rachel the markedly less rich journalist. He's trying to dissolve her independence by coercing her to quit her job so he can become her only source of income, trapping her in a lifelong David-Goliath alliance. Armand, the manager of the White Lotus, is ostensibly a Goliath surrounded by Davids, but more often than not, they have the power over him, be that through a knowledge of his past addictions or present-day indiscretions. The Mossbacker family is exceptionally rich, but the core relationship between Nicole and Mark is classic David vs. Goliath. She's a search engine CFO, somewhat ostracized from her own family because of her overwhelming job and all the responsibilities that come with it, and he has an existential breakdown for being so devoid of purpose and identity. And then there's Tanya, who wants to help Belinda get out of her daily David grind and into the Goliath position of running her own business. A huge chunk of the dramatic meat of the White Lotus comes from class disparity and the characters vying to change their social positions. Number three, Alec. Alec Merlino was a contestant on Survivor David vs. Goliath. He was disinvited from the reunion for letting people know he was dating Kara, another contestant, before the season aired. However, he was invited by Mike White to play Hutch on The White Lotus, despite having zero previous acting credits. He's in five of the six episodes in such a minor role you would be forgiven for not noticing his presence or even noticing it's the same guy doing all these very minor things. But but if you watch Survivor, his presence on the show is a beacon. It's a foghorn saying, I played Survivor, this show is about Survivor, make a video essay about it, you fools. Mike White used Alec Merlino as a thematic foghorn woven throughout the series, and as a bonus, according to an EW interview, the pair would snorkel and surf on the weekends. Number four, colonialism and cultural appropriation. Survivor is pretty bad when it comes to cultural appropriation, and the show often embodies a colonialist perspective. There are numerous tribal motifs that make up the show's aesthetic, including the theme song and random musical interludes. There's the design of the challenges and immunity idols, and Probst refers to land as untouched, if only because Americans don't tend to visit. 
It's a big mess that could easily be the standalone subject of another video, and there's a good amount of writing and discussion on the subject if you want to dig deep. The White Lotus presents a similar aesthetic, the Hawaiian hotel run by a white guy, but with a critical eye. The dramatic crux of episode four is the unavoidable realization that the indigenous Hawaiian culture is being exploited to make the hotel more appealing, and this culminates in the stomach-churning dance montage that pushes the most dangerous conflict of the show into motion. While the White Lotus grapples with the implications of cultural appropriation and how to find some kind of way to make things right that isn't also problematic, Survivor seems to have at least considered its racism in the long COVID offseason, pledging to cast at least 50% BIPOC people moving forward, and the logo for season 41 is notably free of generic tribal patterns or objects, hopefully a sign of things to come. Number five future seasons. Integral to Survivor's success is the casting of new players most of the time, and up until the last five-ish years of the show, finding a new location. I remember way back in 2000, just before season two, and this sounds crazy now, and I was 13 at the time, but this was actually a very tough psychological pill to swallow. Loving season one so hard, thinking we'd never see Greg or Colleen or Jervis or Richard again, but it was absolutely 100% the correct move for the show. And on the flip side, there have been a lot of shows that should have recast or changed their location every year, but they never did, and they were arguably way less good because of it. The White Lotus has been renewed for a second season, and Mike White has confirmed it's gonna be a new cast in a new location. And that's because Mike White, the Survivor player, knows it's a winning formula. It's the reason Survivor is headed into season 41, and the White Lotus could easily blossom into a never-ending Survivor cameo-giving counterpart. It's that infinitely renewable promise of new characters, new relationships, and new worlds to explore. I do think he should bring back Alec Merlino, though, if only as a nod to returning player seasons. All right, I hope I see you here next time. I have have a degree in film. Bye for now.